Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marque of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College at the Life Cathedral in the Zoe Chapel, the newly refurbished uh, Zoe Chapel. We meet on Sundays in the morning from 7 to 9 for first service, and then 10 to 12 for second service, and the very, very strict COVID sanitary conditions. Very, very, very strict safety and sanitary conditions. So make a date with us. And then we also meet on Wednesdays, 6.30 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. Now, this morning, I'd like to capture my thought, do not push me. Do not push me. Or I'd like me to say it in, in, in biblical language, push me not. <laughs> no, no, no. Do not push me. A couple of weeks ago, I shared with everyone on how to prolong your life. And I said sometimes uh, it is not the prayer, it is the obedience to the principle. And then I shared on uh, Ephesians where I said, the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother that it may be well with you and that your days on this land, uh, on this earth may be prolonged. So and I, said to, and I said, longevity and wellness is dependent upon honor. Upon the principle of honor, you pursue with your parents, and uh, and I and I went on to say that if you do something and your mother says, hmm, five years of your life is gone, hmm, hmm, ten years is gone. If your father says, hmm, you have expired, and uh, you know it, it gave a lot of parents boost, and they were very excited by it. That's true, and I really, really meant every word of it. But you see, the the, the Bible has made room and provision to deal with abuse, and that is when parents abuse that right or the privilege that God has given to them. And so guess what Paul then wrote in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. It says, parents, do not provoke your sons and your daughters, do not provoke your children to wrath and to anger. Look at what he says. Do not provoke them. That means don't deal with them in issues. Don't, don't be the, the, the startup of war. Don't be the startup of the, that will raise anger in the children. It, it is not a carte blanche that gives you right to because honor the, the, the mother and the father that it may be well with you. It doesn't give you right to just do anything. It doesn't give you right to abuse the children. It doesn't give you right to just do anything you want. No. The Bible puts checks and balances in there so that parents will not abuse they are God-given rights and God-given privileges. And that, the, that is honor. Mind you, the reason why God says we should honor our parents is because they are the first God we see when we arrive here on this earth. When we came in as babies, we never prayed our Father which art in heaven. We never spoke in tongues. Maybe we tried to with our nge nge. But guess what? The first prayer that we raised was for our parents. If you wanted food, you cried to your mother. If you wanted something, you ask your daddy. So they play the role of God in our lives. And God expects them for He borrowing them and giving us pictures of who he was, of who he is. God used our parents to paint pictures of, a, uh, of, of himself so that we understand his fatherhood. And many times he alludes to the fatherhood principles when he's dealing with us. In terms of even asking us, he said, who would ask his father for eggs and then he'd be giving scorpions? Who would ask his father for fish and be given a serpent? He said, if your earthly fathers know how to do this, me, I'm your heavenly father. I can do better. So this is what God uses. He uses pictures of appearance to paint himself to us. And that is why people, absent fathers is a very dangerous thing. Not just absent fathers, but fathers who um, renege on their responsibilities, who um, do not fulfill their God-given responsibilities, who can't fulfill these three roles as priest, priest, prophet, and king. Priest to teach uh, the, the tenets of God, to teach and show our kids and our family the, uh, the pathway of God. 
prophets to bring the mind of God, the revelatory mind of God, to speak into the future and to direct them and to give them directions for the future and kings then to rule. Of course, you can't be a king when you've not been a priest and you've not been a prophet. That is abuse. These are the platforms for abuse. And the Bible said, see, they are the pictures that God gives to us. They are the pictures that God gives to us. So we should honor them for the fact that God used their vessels to paint pictures of himself to us, to paint pictures of himself to us. But here's the principle. It doesn't give parents the right to abuse that privilege that God has given to them. So God is saying to parents, take care and do not push your children to anger and to wrath. Don't push them to the place of disobeying you. Don't push them to the place where they would rise up and speak up against you. Do not push them. Do not provide them platforms to walk in disobedience and do not provide them platforms to talk to you anyhow and to, and to infringe on the relationship that they have with you. To infringe on, on, on the narrative of respect that they have for you. And the Bible cautions parents. So you know what? Yeah, we would honor you. Yeah, we'll give you all the, the honor that you need and that you don't even need. But guess what? Do not push us. Do not provoke us to anger and to wrath. You need to also understand that they also have God-given rights. And you need to understand that God gave them to us to nourish them and to make them understand the fatherhood of God and the motherhood of God. You know, so parents, do not push us. So me as a parent, I'm sure somebody will say, yeah, daddy, don't push me. See you later.